High fuel prices are tearing up the family budget. We all have to deal with it, but it is tougher for some than others. Farmers are among the groups hammered by those escalating costs because of all the equipment they have to operate, and most of them require some kind of fuel. Resourceful farmers like Philip Barker in North Central North Carolina are doing something about those higher prices. To make sure his farming operation remains profitable, Mr. Barker makes his own fuel right on the farm. We wanted to continue to do some, some type of farm, and fuel continued to, price continued to rise, and we sort of set a scale that $4 fuel was almost impossible to farm if you had to purchase it. And we began down, that, down the road of learning how. And we mastered the, the art and science of how to make the mixes, how to get it done. And once we got that done, uh, it was just a matter of accumulating enough oil to continue to make it. And that oil he's talking about is used cooking oil that's available locally. Over the years, we've grown vegetables and we've, we've accumulated a relationship with several different uh, restaurateurs and they let us have their own. But the supply of used cooking oil can be limited, so Barker has planted almost a dozen acres of canola, a crop that shows a lot of promise in the making of fuel. We realize that it will be very hard to stabilize a business, a fuel business, uh, using used cooking oil. There's just not enough cooking oil used out there available for all the uses there are out there for it. In certain areas, we have problems in this state growing wheat. This compete very well for those acres of wheat and should compete on the same price levels of wheat because it's in that same area, which gives a fuel maker the opportunity to make money with it. And I think that's what we'll be working on over the next couple of years is how we get growers to understand where that pricing should fall. What we have found in our research is we, when we crush our canola and sit it there, uh, it'll stay there, weather changing, and it'll get down in the teens and never change the color. The cooking oil, when it drops down 30 degrees, it's already starting to cloud, which means you're making a better grade fuel from this oil, plus you can send it across state lines. That's going to be important in the future also is how these biofuels will hold up as you ship them in different climates. So that's an advantage. Barker has spent considerable time, resources, and money to keep his farm profitable. And it's not easy to set up a fuel making operation from scratch without some assistance. To get his system off the ground and running, he has had some help along the way. When we started here, just just was the ground, and we had a little assistance from uh, uh, National Conservation Research uh, folk helped us a little bit with the shed. So we've had a little pieces of uh, grant money to help us, you know, get to this this state. Barker is also teaching others how to make biofuel for their own farms. Uh, I think what we have done is just tried to move forward. Uh, and we've made, built several boilers for other small farmers and tried to improve, you know, the ways that other farmers do it. And we've gotten rewards from that. Barker has a circle of life type philosophy. He feels it's important to think about future generations and that you have an obligation to leave something behind. I think it's incumbent upon everyone right now to try to look at job creation. How do you take it from here to create some jobs that maybe some young folk uh, can move it forward? You know, I'm also at the age that uh, maybe I don't want to stop here, but I'm also at the age that I don't want to go way out there anymore either. So, but I would like to see it developed uh, to where some young people could come in and manage it and, and move it on to a bigger operation.